Imagine him going through the car wash. That's plenty of oil. <laughs> Jason Line and his pro stop they do it. He's got problems again. Here goes Cap in trouble. Man, he is just living. just lifted it right off of the frame. And he's got himself a handful of hot race cars. We have a fire coming out of Sabrini's car. Out of the headers, you can see what looks to me like a real problem here. You bet it is, Ken. Uh, there's something definitely wrong with that car. That flame out of the number one cylinder is getting worse, and it looks like it's catching the side of the body on fire. Blowtorch and Al Sabrini's automobile all the way from Utica, Rome, New York, and it looks like it's all going up in smoke for Sabrini right here at the starting line. That has to be a frustration. And there's the sign. It's all over for Al Segrini before he ever was able to make the race. Watch the car in the near side lane. Dave Uahara, Santa Clara, California, smacks the wall. One of the worst top fuel crashes I have ever seen. You see the rear end of the car bouncing down the drag strip. It literally explodes, but that's okay. What's important is that the roll cage section where Uahara is strapped in is intact and he is going to be A-OK, -okay, Paul. The safety crew is already on top of the car and Steve, when the parts fly off of the car. And the stress of over 250 miles an hour is continually placed on the nitro burning engines used in top fuel racing. Sometimes, as Joe Amato found out in round number one, something lets go. While Amato was pulling to a stop on the racetrack, his competition Lucille Lee was waiting patiently at the starting line. With Amato out of racing for the day, the all Lucille had to do was go straight. A quick wheel stand. Lucille across the center line of the track. And destruction and Thorpe explodes the motor. He holds on to win it. The supercharger hanging off the side of the car. And Richard Tharp defeats Shirley Muldown. Final round appearance at an NHRA championship event. Dave Conicolette is very anxious. He's motioning to the starter, get Jody Smart up here. I'm ready. Jody Smart, who took a long time in the burnout as we explained why he stopped the car so slowly. Coletta is not happy at all. Finally, they are staged and ready. Jody Smart is in. And the motor explodes on Connie Coletta's car. The car going sideways and trailing oil. You can see it just coming out of the engine and the flames underneath the car. Connie, I am sure, realizes that it's rather warm. Jody Smart shuts it off. He goes on through and takes the win and turns off. But for Connie Coletta, a tremendous engine explosion. The fire still burns. Is in the lane nearest the camera, and he puts a tremendous hole shot on Marconi. Marconi very late off the starting line, and Gwen with a brilliant performance as Marconi continues on, and Marconi's parachutes have not opened. The car streaking down the shutdown area, beginning to bounce as Marconi hits the brakes of those huge rear tires, acting like rubber balls. It almost turns over, and Marconi puts it into the guardrail and the fence at the end of the racetrack. All right, let's watch Dick LaHaye. Remember, this is a new untried power plant. Not only untried, they had hoped to never unload it out of the trailer here because it was built for sea level competition. Whoa, look at that fire, uh, Steve. Fire come out of that header. Something has backfired on that engine. LaHaye has now pulled to the stop at the end of the burnout. The motor sounds very erratic. Oh. LaHaye may be out of this thing. Yeah, he has heard the pop. I guess he figures it's got a rod out or something. Very professional has pulled over to the side to keep from oil in the drag strip. But there's no oil coming out of it. And the engine is still running. Well, there goes Tom Cattleman, one of the uh, members of the LaHaye crew, starting line. He's backing up. This isn't over yet, Gary. Well, amazingly, he is rolling back into position. And as we take another look, Don Garlitz, what do you think may have happened? 
Well, it looks like the engine shoots a lot of fuel out, no load on it. The fuel explodes in midair outside of the engine, no damage to the engine, just a lot of concussion in the immediate area of the starting line. Oh, Steve, you have no idea how difficult that is. I'd take my hat off to that young man to be able to get from a totally different reacting and driving car and then into a fuel dragster. Understand in the alcohol funny car, you have two, oh, Pat Austin on the burnout has exploded the motor. It looks like he backpedaled it. The engine was a little too high. He stepped back on it. It went lean, and he's out of the race. Bleebeard absolutely destroyed. He had put a brand new supercharger on that engine, as Don said. Maybe a little inexperience uh, for Pat Austin, and you can understand why his first weekend in the car. Take it easy and save his parts and equipment. Nobody does that anymore. They won't. Oh, and he bangs the supercharger right off of the starting line. It's a good thing he was on a single run. He'll advance to the final four, but that crew will have a lot of work to do. Oh, Donnie's waving his hands. What's going on? Well, the engine is still running. He's actually trying to stop the car. He cannot stop the car. Evidently, the blower lifted off the manifold. The engine is sucking enough air and fuel to run maybe, oh, 80, 90 miles an hour. Who knows? He has got some problems, Steve. He is picking up speed. Even though the parachutes are out, he is going into the sand trap. Oh, my, a disaster for Corey McLennathan. His fans are right with him. And Pedragon smokes the tires. Forrest smokes the tires. Forrest comes close to the wall. Forrest may have hit the wall. And it's Pedragon across the mark. Oh, you want drama. A 776, but who cares the elapsed time? They slugged it out. They beat each other up all the way down the quarter. It looked like Brotherton just had a nice easy pass till the engine exploded. We see the parachutes getting burned. The car has run nearly 290 miles an hour. Brotherton cannot get it stopped. He tries desperately to save the car, not go into the net. That was a mistake. He turns the car over on its side. Oh yeah, I've never seen this happen before. Watch the car in the far lane. Oh, boom. You know what happened? He blew both rear tires simultaneously. Occasionally, we'll see one tire blow and do a little body damage, but nothing like what we saw here at Pomona in round one. I talked to a shot driver. Beginning this set here at Pomona, Steve Evans, a great race on tap. Absolutely. I wouldn't wager a sue either way. You're running with Kenny Bernstein. We don't see a motto. Bernstein, engine goes away. Bernstein sideways in the middle of the racetrack. Kenny Bernstein in big, big trouble. Bernstein is over the rail, on fire. We are going to rush to the scene. Brock Yates, pick it up. Some folks, but that's where Ramp likes to run. Oh my goodness, and he goes up in smoke, and Shelly has all kinds of problems. Blows the right rear tire. She's trying to control the race car. The parachutes are coming out, and now it'll slow down quickly. But something let go. You saw the sparks come out of the car. The slick 50 dragster, absolutely a mess at this point. Big explosion. Jack Beckman just destroyed a Mopar body. Okay down there, Jack. I'm good. I'm good. Great news as you listen to the onboard communications between Jack and his team. He's good. He climbs out okay, but that sedan became <laughs> a drop top convertible very, very quickly. Tony, you've been through your fair share of fires and things like that. Didn't look like there was even an inkling of an idea that this was going to happen. Well, most of the time, eight times out of ten, it's going to be something in the valve frame. What happens is that any debris or any breakage that holds that intake valve open, well, all of that combustion is going back up. It's going to ignite in the intake manifold, and the majority of this looks probably a lot worse than it was. You see Jack Beckman trying to brake. You got the parachutes out. See, it's doing the right thing, but that body was destroyed. The concussion, Jack will be feeling the effects, and you can see that supercharger come off the car, but fortunately, the NHRA and a lot of these teams have taken measures to really restrain and contain a lot of that damage, and that's probably oh, one of the worst explosions goodness. that I've seen in a long time. Look at that car. Pieces and parts. Jack's hands are off right now. He's reaching for a break. You know, Jack Beckman's been through a lot as an Air Force veteran, cancer survivor, and he just went through a big one 
right there. Well, you can there. see Jack is moving his hands. What he's doing is a conditioned response. He has done this so many times over and over. He knows where the fuel shutoff is. He knows where the brake is. He knows to turn the shut off, turn the uh, electronics off on the car. So he's going through all of the motions, and it's sheer instinct that he has conditioned himself to do. Did the top of that supercharger flip all the way under the car? And where is the manifold? I have never seen an explosion. some movement from the helmet and this is good news that Steve is getting out of the car. explosion from Tony Schumacher. Clay Milliken goes low elapsed time, grabs the four bonus points for that. But that was a destructive moment captured via the Lucas Oil Chopper. That flame was huge. Well, this is a massive concussion right there, and you can see the damage occurred before the engine blew. So there's a good chance that it was something in the drivetrain, not necessarily anything in the valve train, because that car lost power in a split second after that is when you saw the explosion. Let's go on board, ride along with Tony Schumacher and experience it. Wow. Big time concussion, big time fireball, massive destruction. Courtney runs out of steam in the champ. Hammers on with a busted race car. Hold on tight. Well, Robert's on the brakes right now. You can hear it. Momentum into that sand trap. 